coming out of thoughts and into our body is really what we're training in in our meditation practice. It's really the kind of the crux of it. That that begins to wake us up out of the trance. The basic pathway is, whether gradual or not gradual, thoughts to body and feelings, feeling the feelings, and then opening to love. There are so many ways each of us really is in a process of discovering what is it for me when I'm stuck, when I'm cut off, that helps me to remember love? What is it? And it's it's about the most important inquiry we can ask ourselves. What helps me remember love, our connection, our belonging, when I'm feeling cut off. There's a meditation of remembrance that we're going to practice together tonight that is one of, it's, it's one of the ones that for me has been most profound. And I came upon it at a retreat a couple of years ago. And I arrived at retreat, um, I'd kind of do a, an annual retreat up, at, up in New England. And I had been in a really busy period, so when I arrived at retreat, there was a lot of unwinding of, you know, I, had, I just had so much pressure that when I was at home, I had felt very particularly impatient and tight and selfish and self-centered. And especially with those that I was closest to, I just felt like, you know, I could come and be gracious and give a talk, but then I was not very attentive with my family and so on. So, of course, as it happens, as soon as I got to retreat and things quieted, I had to face uh, my sense of bad personhood, which is how it goes often. And, and I've done so many rounds, uh, you know, over the decades of getting in touch with that very tenacious place that that sees the spacesuit self and doesn't like her for it, you know, that um, I I tend to say, okay, let's let it rip. Let's see what the judgments that are going on are. And the judging self was, it was very um, harsh. It was really saying, you know, like, after all these years, you can't be a nicer person. What's the deal, (laughs) you know? And, um, and, And it was that very familiar feeling of this, this self is not lovable. The self here is not lovable. And so um, I, you know, really let myself open to the sensations as I'm describing to you, the feeling of being very young and very vulnerable and really not like, really not trusting the lovability. Uh, and, you know, I, try, I tried to, you know, offer myself compassion and that didn't work. I tried the things I know how to do, you know, it's, it's okay, sweetheart, that kind of thing. And there was just a very young place in me, and it was, and when I really let myself go inside that feeling of that young place, the expression, the words were, please love me. It was reaching out. It was like it needed something from the outside. And when I let, and I actually, I actually whispered it, please love me, you know, and I, I whispered it from deep, deep yearning. And then what happened was I just sensed, well, what would it be, you know, if I really wanted to feel loved, it would feel like an enveloping warm presence that was right here shining and um, just absolutely attending to and seeing and caring about me, offering me blessings. And I actually felt the sense of this warm, loving presence uh, offering a kiss, a kiss of blessing on, on my brow. And with that, it was just, you know, like, kind of like bathed in love. And in that bathing in love, something in me really surrendered and that, that, that sunshine, light, heart that is always there was able to be free to then merge with the light that I perceived as around me. So it started, though, with imagining and sensing myself kissed on the brow and then a dissolving and opening into that field of, of loving presence. And it was delicious, and I was resting in it, just feeling, you know, like that, that all those currents of unlovability were being held. And then I, um, over these next few days, but starting in those moments, would bring to mind people that I loved. And with each person I would bring to mind, 
I would sense that field of love and presence and imagine offering them a blessing, kissing them on the brow or putting my hand on their cheek or hugging them, different, different people, different ways. But every time I do it, then the field of loving got bigger. So when I was feeling small, I'd imagine being kissed on the brow, being blessed. And when I was feeling expansive, no longer identify with the spacesuit self, with bodhicitta was really radiant, I would offer blessings. And each, it's like, you know, the, the negative looping, each was a kind of looping to greater and greater field of bodhicitta. So I turned it into a loving-kindness practice that I do regularly now, where I'll... Um, sit and I'll, it doesn't matter if I'm feeling small or not small, I'll sit and I'll imagine and sense being blessed with loving presence. And that just naturally, just talking about it, you know, it helps me to open and soften. And then I bring to mind others and I'll offer them that blessing. The expressing is, is, is really basic. And um, since I am on a dog theme tonight, this is Mary Oliver who has a whole book on dogs and loving the, her dogs. It's called Little Dog's Rhapsody in the Night. He puts his cheek against mine and makes small expressive sounds. And when I'm awake, or awake enough, he turns upside down, his four paws in the air, and his eyes dark and fervent. Tell me you love me, he says. Tell me again. Could there be a sweeter arrangement Over and over, he gets to ask. I get to tell. (laughs) So we, you know, just a little reflecting on the Velveteen Rabbit and how we become more real when we're in that field of loving. And by nature, we need to feel it coming in. We need to feel we're being loved, and by nature it grows as we offer it out. And this really is the experience of bodhicitta. Gradually what happens is we realize it's not like something outside is loving this, or this is loving that. It's a field of loving. And we recognize that that field of loving presence is more the truth of who we are than any story we've ever lived in about a separate self. 